Nope. Right, so first things first, that meme I did of Fantano is kind of blowing up. So if you're hearing the channel because of that, you are magnificent! And now let's get into this new series, where I basically check out some albums that I missed in the last six months. Yeah, this is going to be sort of a spin-off of the albums of the month, featuring a bunch of albums that were released during the last six months, and I didn't check them out until months after they came out. Not a difficult concept to understand if you have a brain. Anyway, the albums here came out between January and June, and it's also only released that really stood out to me, or had a certain buzz and I didn't review them. So you're going to notice that the scores here are way higher than usual. And with all of that out of the way, let's get to business. I'm not a huge fan of Arlo Park's previous EPs, so to me it's kind of a surprise that this new album of hers is actually one of my favorite bedroom pop releases ever. There isn't anything here that's very ahead of the curve or never seen before. It's just a really great collection of really great songs. Every song in here is fantastically enjoyable, and I've returned to it quite often since I found out about it. And this album is pretty much the reason I'm doing this video in specific. Sure, the latter half is a bit weaker, but the burden it leaves is rather small. It's catchy, Arlo's voice is super smooth, and her accent is very pleasing. And the first five songs after the intro are some of the greatest segments I've heard in music all year. I cannot praise this thing enough. I hope she only goes up from here. Credits rolling for the highlights on screen, followed by a score of the record of 95% superb. It's a pretty good release. It's not the most memorable thing, but I did enjoy a lot of what I heard. The positive highlights especially. I'm still more likely to return to his last year's album though. I feel like the only setting out feature I can say about it is that the second track kinda reminds me of Jack Johnson, but overall it just feels like a foreigner B-sides. Good B-sides for that matter. But still just B-sides. 79% super. Does it sound good? Yes. Am I able to remember anything after listening to it? Eh, vaguely. A lot of very memorable post-punk projects came out this year. Black Country New Road, Squid, etc. Shame dropped before all of these. And I feel like if I had reviewed it at the time it released, I'd have liked this way more. But considering everything that came after during the year, it kinda lost my interest. I feel like it's a pretty good album, but it's not one that really stands out in the crowds. The sound pilots used are pretty common for post-punk standards. The production is alright, and the positive highlights are pretty nice, but not the best thing ever. It's not a bad album by any means, but I don't think it's an experience that will truly be remarkable in your listening logs. 73% Across the industry, there's many different types of albums. This new Greenleaf one fits in the title of not mind-blowing, but very, very consistently great. I personally had a really great time listening to this. All the songs are incredibly great, and I can see myself return to every single one of them. Even the negative highlights. Despite all of this, none of the songs completely blew my mind. Sure, I have my favorites, the positive highlights show it, but even those don't have a certain something that takes it to God's status on my taste. I believe that the main cause of that is that the mixing of the album sounds quieter than it should be. Regardless, don't miss out on this record, it's a damn fine stoner rock release, and one of the best rock albums of the year. To prove, the score is 91% superb. How about that? This album has some really strong chances of making my year and top 10. Seriously, at the very least it's going to make the honorable mentions, there's no way it's going to be left out. First of all, the beats. These are some genuinely phenomenal jazz rap beats. Some of those didn't really click with me upon first listen, but the more I heard these records, the more I started to fall in love with all of them. They are so lush and gorgeous, to the point that it makes me want to use this record as a perfect sampler of what great jazz beats sound like. And at points, the lyrics hit really hard. You can clearly see how this project comes deep from his heart. And they're especially complemented by McKinley's fantastic flow. I was not expecting to love this guy's flow so much. Sadly, there was some aspects in here that didn't really please me. Some tracks felt like they would go for a little long, and at points the mixing is a little flawed. These two aspects affected slightly my experience with the record. But overall, I still love it and see it as one of the best rap records, if not the best rap record of the year. And I really hope this guy has a Kendrick-ish rise. Now, he's an underdog, that just put out a 95% superb album, yet still an underdog. But let's see later in the decade. Also, highlights here. I mean, it's a pretty okay rap album. I like how the production has a very pronounced bass, but the whole project is pretty mid. The opening track is really good though. It's possibly the best songs Dupe released in a while. And the other positive highlights are not too shabby as well. But the whole project is just completely forgettable, and not something that keeps you very excited. We do have some of that Snoop charisma, but even that can really lift the record. And those songs here definitely didn't help. So all I can really say about this record is that you won't hate it, but you also won't remember much of it. 
Wait, what was I talking about again? Oh! By leaks, and I mean leaks. This is my favorite Godspeed You Black Emperor album. I still don't like it very much though. I think that has always affected my experience with this guy's music. It's how necessarily long it all sounds to me. All other songs were like white noise for 9 minutes, then a peak of greatness that goes for like 30 seconds and back to white noise. This record has a very similar formula, but the intervals are shorter and the peaks last longer, which made me have a better connection with it than the previous ones. And most importantly, made me get why people like the material of this band. I myself still have a really hard time with it. I did like it, but the few recording segments to me still feel like plain filler. I guess it's a matter of adaptation to the genre. And this record made it get closer to clicking with me. But there's still a long way, I believe. Maybe someday, though. I genuinely want to like this. Anyway, positive highlights, now the negatives. And the score is 57%. This album confirmed me something that I started realizing last year's Freddie Gibbs album, that is that I don't like the Alchemist's production very much. The beats in here have a very daisy, trippy atmosphere. It feels all slowed down, like you're in a sort of slow motion segment, especially with the flows of Billy Woods and the Lucid enhancing that aspect. It's quite a trip, and I admire how much of a unique approach this is, but it's not one that I'd voluntarily listen to. There were a few songs that I did like it here, well, not all of them. But the whole project to me wasn't the winner. But I really do respect the approach it was taken here. Nice job to both artists anyway. 60%. Concept-wise, this EP is terrific. The story is told with consistently greatness from beginning to end. The interludes, despite taking half of the tracklist, are very essential to the listening experience. And honestly, don't feel like there's too many of them. But on the other hand, musically it's pretty average. Mostly because the instrumentals aren't very hooky. Sure, we do have some goodies in the positive highlights. But I don't think there's a specific moment sound-wise in this record that truly grabbed me. I still could give this record a low score. Considering its explorations of sexuality are stellar, and Jasmine's performances are very compelling. Even if there's still the negative highlight, and I do wish the instrumentals had more substance. So overall, yeah, pretty good. 72%. I feel like never before since I started to review albums, and now we'll cover match so well with the feeling of the album. Because this is indeed an album that makes you want to go to a field of flowers, dive into it, and become one with the earth. And it does that in a very ethereal way too. This album has a very strong dreamy slash heavenly quality to it. To the point that it makes it feel like an electropop record made by an angel. And I feel like that description alone makes it sound like the album takes 100% superb from me. But no, it has a few moments that are a bit loose. But the solid majority of the record is very good, especially the positive highlights. It's quite an interesting experience. And in my view, it's one of the quintessential albums of the year. Now, if you excuse me, I'm going to recreate this album cover in Minecraft, because I'm still under quarantine. Yeah, that seems right to me. I don't know how much of a hot take this is, but I prefer this way more than the original plugs I met. The main reason for that is because the beats are better, but there's some other more subtle improvements. I like the lyrics here more, and the production feels very clean. However, as I've mentioned before here, the star of the show here are the beats. They're more on the conventional side of things, but that doesn't mean they are boring, because they aren't. These are some of the best beats I've heard in a Griselda project. The positive highlights are just the cream of the crop in the question. Much like the new Green Leaf album, it's not a mind-blowing project, but it's so consistently good that it makes it one of the best EPs of the year, and one of the best releases of the Griselda camp. 92% of pure awesomeness and superbness. I won't even waste too much time in here, this is Drake's best release simply because it's 12 minutes long, so less suffering for my years. R&B is a genre that is often tricky, at the same time we have some phenomenal projects making year-end lists and receiving critical acclaim, it's also very easy to make it boring. This album to me is definitely a standout in that genre. Erica's voice is super silky and gentle on the ears, but she often shows some really great flows in here and quite a bit of attitude, and the instrumentals here are sweet too. At the same time they're chill and intimate, they're also very lush and at points quite experimental. Blending well elements of dance, soul, and a distant note that resembles me of Latin pop. The production here is also really good. Minimalist, low-key, but still very luxurious. 
and the lurks have also pretty interesting quirkiness to them, that I really liked. The only point against it that I have to say is that not always this record hits in how it sounds. There are some tracks, especially the negative highlights, that fall in the more stale side of R&B, and ended up being sort of a duds here. But overall, I gotta admit, this is a pretty compelling record, and I'm curious to see where Erica goes from now. Positive highlights showing up, and for the score here, I'd say... 85% superb. Not sensational, uh, but it's close enough. It's like the stick of the wrestler nearby my house. Of good quality, but under-seasoned. I honestly don't have much to say here, it's just a nice instrumental hip-hop album. The main thing I can praise is that each song has something that distinguishes them from the other songs in the record, but that's not synonym of a fantastic record. It just means it was well made. I only wish the compositions were a little less run-of-the-mill. Sure, I will return to it, especially the positive highlights. Even though it's nice, there isn't much that really sets it apart in the crowds. Not even the negative highlights, they're just boring. Anyway, 73% here. 